Hello and welcome. These are horse racing selections for Thursday, the 5th of January. I am Flat Cap Callum and I'm hoping you are all very, very well. Alrighty, coming up, what have we got? Quite a day on Thursday, three quarter stake, £15 is our wager for Thursday selections in the form of two lucky 15s, one combination double bet. First race, 12.45. So three bets, 12.45. Wolverhampton is the first race. And that's the one that I'm slightly favouring from a value perspective um, for Thursday. So you know it's going to be a cracker when I'm telling you the 12.45 at Wolverhampton is the main race. So uh, we we will make do with what we've got. Um, the Lucky 15s are both cross, cross card ones as well. So they've both got... Uh, one Foss Lass, one Chelmsford race and two Wolverhampton races in each of the lucky 15s. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're both last legs are kind of much, much later on. So we'll, we'll either be waiting for not a lot or, or we might be waiting to see if we can uh, build on something we've already had. Um, we shall see. So before I do that, um, do the review of how Wednesday went, which wasn't great in terms of profit and loss. So we'll do that. Um, and I'm also going to do it at the end uh, after I've done Thursday's bets. I'm just going to go through because there was three horses yesterday or Wednesday that made the frame at Newcastle. Uh, we had a, a place at 125 to 1 in race 1 and then race 3 it was 125 to 1 winner and race 4 100 to 1 winner. And a lot of people have been asking me, I mean there's been a couple of head on, getting excited again a lot of people haven't been asking me there was a couple of comments about come on sort yourself out why aren't you picking those ones um and i, and I want to go through them because good practice uh, which i would say is, is is good practice anytime there's a big price winner like that i will always go back and have a look through to see if i can work out was there something that would have given me an indication that that horse could have run well because by learning from other big price winners you can find future big price winners. And I would say of the three horses that ran at Newcastle, the two winners and the one third place that all were 100, 125 to 1, I think all three were findable. So I didn't find them for the channel, did I? <laughs> no, clearly not. But but I think it's a useful exercise to kind of demonstrate if I, I'm kind of share my best practice of I've gone back, looked through, and I've looked through, and I say it's, this is what I can see. Sometimes you you find these horses, and and you're like, it doesn't matter which way I would not find, I wouldn't have found those. The the rarity here is, and this this might have been missed by some, is it happened at an all weather meeting at Newcastle. You don't usually find big prices like this popping up in those sorts of meetings. You tend to find big big price winners are more on the jumps and more in novice maiden hurdle races where you've got something very unexposed that's just suddenly had a burst of improvement. You don't usually find it, like we had two handicaps at Newcastle, one, one wasn't. Um, it's a rarity, um, and to have them like a clump it is a real rarity. So I'll, I'll, I'll go back through those at the end. All right, so how did we do for Wednesday? Not great. 25 on, I got it at 7.02 back. Strike rate wise, it wasn't bad, four out of 12, which is where we'd want to be um, in terms of an average. But actually, uh, because there wasn't three together and the main amount of stake went on more, more of the done taught ones that were, weren't so good um, and there wasn't a winner amongst them, it meant that um, we had lost out. It was one of those ones where if you were back, backing them singles, you wouldn't have lost too much. You would have lost more accumulators. And this is part of the strategy. On a really good day when you collect winners together or collect a lot of places, it exponentially increases the return you get. But on a lot of days, you'd be better off just betting them in singles. And so I think this is some of what the, the stats is, is sort of demonstrating that I shared the other day around actually singles aren't as bad in the long term as what people might think they might be. Um, what you won't get there is you won't get a big jackpot win. And so by playing accumulators, you're, you're living a dream a little bit around, can we get the big one? Can we find Bahamas Day? Clearly, <laughs> if, you'd, if you'd managed to get 100 and 125 together today at Newcastle, you'd have been living the Bahamas dream. Because um, that was whatever that is, like a 10,000 to one um, double. Uh, that doesn't 
that doesn't come along very often. Um, <laughs> certainly not on the same day and not in certainly in consecutive races. Um, so yeah, a bit of a rarity. So um, let's spin through it. So we started off uh, with a couple of duffers. They both went from the front as far as I could see and then faded. And you just, Newcastle was not really a front runner ton of a course. You, you, you got to be pretty good to go from the front and stay there. You, it tends to be ones that, that come from a little bit further back. So not so good and then next two both placed um very pleased for uh for charlie regular follower of the channel in the 455 a horse that he uh, part owns as dar won that one and fortunately it beat our horse but i'd take 16 to one place over the two to one favorite every day <laughs> so so there we go but yeah two places does not make profit off a bet we need three places on the way that i do them to make profit so we had a little loss on bet one because of uh, two places and then bet two, um, this one was absolutely yucky, <laughs> to, to use a non-horse racing term. Uh, yeah, no good, basically. No good was bet two. So that cost us. Um, and then we had a similar situation to bet one here, that the first two went down. And then Indian Raj, which I did quite like, um, placed. Um, and uh, Celtic uh, or Celtic Revival placed. Um, and so we got a place double there. Again, if you look at the winner of that race, the 4.45, it was 25 to one shot. It was findable. Last time out, it ran a competitive race. Um, I think it was something like seventh. And of the six horses that finished ahead of it, they were all in the top four or five uh, next time out. Um, so it shows you that the race was, was a decent enough quality race. But again, I didn't find it, did I? Um, bet four, uh, a bunch of uh, trash. Uh, Indian Raj was the only one. So 25 on, 702 back, I've got it as. So we are now down for the week about 18 quid. Down for the year are nearly about 25 pounds. So that is how we're starting January. Can we turn it around for Thursday? Well, Wolverhampton, Fosslass and Chelmsford will, will tell us. Um, so what have we got? Starting off here, um, Leg one, 12.45, Wolverhampton. As mentioned, my favoured race. I think there's a lot of value in there. I think the, the top of the market in that race, as it currently stands, are a little bit vulnerable. What you've got is a lot of horses that look like they're on a sharp improvement and therefore they are marked up accordingly so in terms of the book. So they are much, much shorter prices. And what you've then got is you've got some very well handicapped horses at 12.45 that are artificially a much bigger price. So are all the ones on a sharp incline all going to continue to run well? The likelihood is not. So he's trying to find what, what, what there is there at value in that 1245 that basically can run, run con to a consistent level um, and, and get in the frame. So unlikely winners to a degree because you've got a lot on, on a sharp uh, upward incline. But I've gone for a couple of prices in that 12.45 that I think look consistent enough that they they uh, they could make a frame. You know, paying four places on more or less all bookies on that 12.45. So Diamond Jill 18s, 130 last uh, sabbatical 20s. I really like that price. Um, I think there's there's a level of competitiveness about that race, but I would rate rate, rate that more like a 10 to one shot. So 20s is a good one. Um, 215 Wolverhampton Madrino, which we've taken before. Um, it's just been a little bit edging out the places. Maybe maybe its turn is near. So we're having another go with Madrino 18s. And then 630 Chelmsford with Jamara Bridge, which was part of our trio of Chelmsford winners back in September, October, I think it was October, with the Yankee bet where we had three three horses at Chelmsford all go in. Shorter price, um, for Thursday, but I still I still think it's favourable terms in, in a very low grade race. So 20p each way, lucky 15, 25p each way double on sabbatical and mandrino. We're going to go in that. That's bet one, 650 a bet. Sky best, coral next best. The only reason coral aren't level with sky is four there, standard terms there, four there. Sky have gone five there, which I'm hoping we wouldn't need five. So if you want to try and get bog, we, we risk fifth place. I think that's worth risking. <laughs> Famous last words. Um, and then Jamira Bridge, you can, you can do that with Coral and you'll get best price guaranteed in the morning. Well, you get it tonight um, with Coral if you're in the UK. Um, if they let you put a lucky 15 on because they've stopped doing that at the moment. So you might have to wait till the morning. Um, I wouldn't be massively worried about these prices. Maybe sabbatical. That's the that's the one that I think might be might go in. That's bet one. Um, bet two, bet two, oh yeah, bet two. Some of you will like bet two. 
Uh, all right, 12.45, Wolverhampton. We've got a bigger price here. Destinado, 33s. Two o'clock, Foslas, chancing it on Higgs at a decent price, 33s. 3.15, Wolverhampton. Another one with a slight chancer on there, 25s. And then the 7 o'clock, Chelmsford, which is the other race for the combination bet. I've split-legged it here between Richard RHB, which has got some solid form in the book, and then Seattle King, which I am absolutely convinced at some point is just going to turn up at a decent price. Whether or not that's Thursday at Chelmsford within the seven o'clock, I can't tell you. But that horse has plummeted, plummeted um, in ratings um, since being with its current uh, trainer, Phil McAtee. And I just think it had too much quality, at, uh, uh, you know, particularly when it was a two-year-old, to just completely fall off the grid. So I think it's going to bounce at some point. Um, and I think maybe they're figuring out about, about what it might be. So I'm, I'm chancing it that I think what it's got on its plate tomorrow looks like it's possible. So uh, two times 10 p each way, lucky 15s, we've going with there. Um, so legs one, two and three the same, going on to Richard RHB. And then the second lucky 15, first three legs, and then going on to Seattle King. We then got an extra 25 peach way single on Seattle King because it's 80 to 1, so why wouldn't you? Um, that Sky Best Coral second best, 650 a bet. And then the combination double is the four horses mentioned in the two races, the preferable race, 1245. Uh, oh, I didn't put the, <laughs> didn't put the uh, meetings on. 1245 Wolverhampton, 7 o'clock Chelmsford. So we, if, if it's gone well in the afternoon, we might get excited about Seattle King running in the 7 o'clock at Chelmsford. It might just be nothing going on to it other than that 25p each way single. Um, so we're going on to those two. So four times 25p each way doubles. Most bookies, most are paying four um, on this. Uh, 365, which normally mentioned are not. So I'm calling this as Coral 888. So Coral t- tonight, you'd be able to get bog on this. 888, you might have to wait till the morning, but you will still get bog. And if you can't do that, then Sky will pay four places on both as well. Um, so have a have a look, a look around if you've got the option of bookies to see who else you can get that's paying you four places. Um, because for this sort of bet, for a combination double bet, I would want to take four places both race, uh, races to increase chances. I'm not saying I wouldn't do the bet outside of that, but I've, the, the types of horses I've picking in here, some the, the, these are fourth place possibles. Um, so that is that. Hopefully that is clear. All right, so that's Thursday's bets. And then the last thing I was going to say, I'm going to go through these Newcastle horses. Um, and I, I just I jotted down a few notes because um, I, I was like, there's, there's a lot, I, I don't think people realise, there's a lot I can remember on top of my head um, that, that I just regurgitate for video. Um, but I didn't want to didn't kind of mis, misconstrue these Newcastle horses. So what did we have? Race one at Newcastle, we had Miss Scarlet, um, third at 125 to one. What do we think about that horse? If you look back in the history of that horse, and I guess what I would say to you is, for the channel, like for for a day like Wednesday, I probably spent about an hour and a half to two hours researching all the races. That isn't actually a lot of time. Some days, for even for the meetings like that, I could spend three, four hours. Now, as most people know, I've, at the moment I've got a day job, so I, I can't, I haven't got the time. Um, and that's why sometimes the videos, are, as, as this is, out very late at night. Um, so I, I can't spend that amount of time. So I'm not saying if I'd spent more time, would I have picked them or not. I could have done, I might have done, I don't know. I didn't pick them, and I'll explain why I didn't pick them um, as well. But uh, yeah, I, I think that if you spend enough time, these are there to be found. And what I would say as well, and this is an interesting point that, that I don't think I've talked about much, and this might help some people who are you know really getting into finding their own selections. Most people, when they are looking at selections, as we've talked about here, start at the, the top of the market, the short end, and they try and look at all the horses and work it out. If you are a little bit time poor, what you can do and you, you won't go too far wrong, is literally you could look at the bottom four or five in any market where there's a competitive race. And if it's if it's a less competitive race, some of these were, just looking at anything basically 20, you know, we, we talked about on, on the other day, anything more than 20 to one. Just look at it and all you want to do is, can you find a reason why that horse could be competitive in that race? 
So you're, if you, you could just look, if you're quick in time, disregard everything else. Not worry about how competitive is the race or what else might be going on. But sometimes, and I think this is the case in these three, you could see there was, is something in there that would say that horse could be competitive. And at whatever it was, 100 to 1, I don't think those prices were the prices last night. But 100 to 1, that's definitely worth chancing. So that's a very um, simplistic, trimmed down version of, of kind of what, what I do, because I spend a lot more time and, and research looking through it. And sometimes I've, I've talked about going to a second lens. But you could just to be super quick, if all you were doing was time poor, just look at anything 20 to 1 or above and see if you could find a reason why that horse would perform on, on that day, on that race meeting, on that track, on that ground, on that draw, whatever it might be. If you can argue a case, there's something, it might just be worth taking. So uh, anyway, Miss Scarlet, 125 to one third. Um, so that horse is, is, is mainly run over uh, hurdle races and anything from two miles up to two miles seven. Um, and it's performed okay, okay-ish for the standard of the horse it is. So it's mainly done over hurdles. It's lesser runs have been over, over, over the flat. It doesn't particularly like turf on the flat. So all weather flat, it's done it a few times. If you look at the horse, Last time out, on it ran at Southwell at one mile six. Given a horse is two to three miles over hurdles, one mile four is going to be too short. And it looks like, if you read the write-up of it, that that horse was staying on um, because it would prefer two miles. So although it didn't run the best, I think it was sixth of 11, something like that, it, it wasn't terrible. And t- it's suggesting that two miles might be where it, where it needs to get back to. Because one mile four is on a flat is never going to be great for a horse that's been competitive in a two and a half, three mile hurdle race. If you look at its history over Newcastle, over two miles, it run five times. Three of those times in its history, it would have been enough to make the frame for that race. So there was actually quite a lot of clear form to say, albeit not so recent, but there was form to say that that horse could have been competitive. And when you're looking at a race like that, that's really low quality, low grade, you cannot, you will often find horses that are inconsistent horses pop up. So, yeah, I, I didn't look at the race in great detail, which is, is why I, I didn't look at it properly, because I looked at the race. It's, it was the first race of the day. It was only eight runners. And because I was doing the video the night before, I didn't want to risk an eight runner race the night before unless I found something really strong. And so that's the decision I would make. So I would literally glance glance through things. Have I seen anything that really pops out to me? For this one, you had to do a little bit more research and a little bit more work to find what I'm saying to you. But if I actually look and say, to run five times at Newcastle, of course and distance, and three of those five times, it would have made the frame on its current handicap mark. And last time out, it ran over an inadequate distance and was staying on. That makes it sound like it's got a much better chance. It should never have been 125 to 1. Never. Um, so, yeah. There you go. That's that's the horse number one. Horse number two. So the third race, Newcastle. Endo Fast Storm, I think we got it. Um, it was a very unexposed horse for the type of race it was running in. Only ever run six times. Best performance was over course and distance. The other races, it didn't do very much, but the best performance it had was over the course and distance. And that performance, in terms of the rating it was given, would have been enough to give it a frame chance in that race. So again, it, it, its last time out wasn't so good, but the best run it did was over the course and distance. And it ran to a level where it was it, it, well, it second in that race. It, it, could have, um, it would have framed uh, running to the same level. And it actually went and won. So there's a bit of improvement on it, which you will find in a horse that's relatively unexposed. So again, findable. Um, why didn't I look at that race? <laughs> um, I did. I had a horse in that one. Stand free. It didn't run very well. Um, so for me, I looked at that race. And on first glance, I, I, I found a horse at double figure price that I felt was a more solid option. And um, although you could look at that and go that there was one bit of form, one bit of form that would said to you um, on that, I tend to steer away for the channel on any horse where I'm relying on one bit of form. I want to find at least two bits of form, as Miss Scarlet actually had, where you would suggest. So for a channel horse... 
the criteria I've got is I've got to find two two performances really. Occasionally, if it's a real biggie, then I might might do that. But in stand free, I thought I had a much more solid horse. It didn't perform, but that's where I went to on that one. And then the last one, um, not not f- f- me for another. Not I'm oh, something like that. You you know what I'm talking about. One twenty. Uh, that one at hundred to one. It was it was a, a kind of an unexposed type of race. So how could you have found that one? You would have had to have dug in to find that one. Really, this is of the three, this was the hardest one to find. But I think it was findable. And again, if you look through, um, last time out, it ran over course and distance over a mile at Newcastle. And the jockey reported that something was amiss with the horse. So when you see that, you can kind of go, okay, write that off. But you do then have a risk of, and it will artificially make the price higher, that that, there's something wrong with that horse. Sometimes, like humans, you just have an off day. And it sounded like that horse had an off day. It, that was over a mile at Newcastle. If you look at the time before, it ran in a two-mile bumper race and didn't do brilliantly well. The time before that, which was first time out, it ran in a junior bumper over a mile and four furlongs. And it was second. The interesting things about this is... Firstly, it went off as an unraced horse in a juvenile bumper as a two to one favourite. So clearly it was well thought of because you're not looking at that as an unraced horse thinking that's going to run well. For a two to one favourite in an unraced juvenile horse with with a horse that doesn't have the the best pedigree, for for that horse to be two to one, that has to be some level of knowledge on the inside to suggest that horse might be trying. That horse was second, two two to one favourite. It got beaten by a horse that next time out went on and won a listed bumper. So it got it was fancied first time out, didn't win because it got beaten by a surprisingly exceptional horse for the grave that went on to win a listed bumper. It then next time out, it stepped up to two miles. Look at the pedigree. The pedigree suggests one mile to one mile four is where it wants to be. So it was probably a little bit too far on two mile. And the pedigree also does suggest it has got decent uh, lineage on or weather. So actually, one one mile on, on paper, one mile looked a bit short. But but the fact the horse ran on a mile and four bumper and got beaten by a subsequent horse that won a listed race and it was fancy tells you there was a little bit on there. Clearly, it wasn't fancy going off at 100 to 1, but I think it was findable. Um, why didn't I look at that race? Well, I didn't look at that race because um, I'm not making excuses. I'm just hoping this, this sort of long explanation is useful to some of you to get you to think about the types of things that you could look for and, and find in researching in form. I didn't look at the race in great detail because it was a seven runner race. And at first glance, I, I would have missed that. There's no way I'd have seen that on a first glance. I'd have just looked at that and gone last time out, Newcastle, course and distance, didn't run well. Yeah, it was second in a bumper, but it bypassed me that it went off at two to one favourite first time out. Then when you go into it and you go and you see what type of quality horse beat it that's now rated you know over 100 because it won a listed bumper, you know, actually... Although in the rest of the context of the race, there was horses in there that, that were running off a mark of 70, um, which is not too bad for the, for the grade. Actually, that, that horse had more, had more potential. And if, you, if you're looking for value, it was worth a punt if you actually did the level of research needed. So, um, yeah, that's that. So I, I, I know that was kind of a long explanation. Um, I just hope that that was useful to some people to kind of go through that. Because, as I said, every time there's a big price winner, I'll look for it. Um, and there was one the other week, like 200 to 1. Wouldn't have looked at that. Didn't see it. Not at all. No chance. Um, these three at Newcastle, they were findable. Um, so that's that. All right. OK. I will be back tomorrow night for Friday selections. Friday looks interesting. There's some interesting all weather. And I might have a little dabble. There's an, there's an, there's an OK meeting at Maydan. Um, so Maydan's starting up. And... Um, yeah, I, I like a little dabble at Maidan. So, uh, so yes, it may well be a bit of UK, uh, a bit of Dundalk and maybe a bit of Maidan. In terms of the weekend, it's looking like it's going to be a quiet Sunday. Saturday, jury's out. We need to see what where, where the field sizes go down to. On paper at the moment, it looks not bad, particularly at Sandown. But I'm, I'm, I'll be jury's out until I see how many horses come out at the next declaration stage. Um, before I actually make a call that says it is a is a good good or not uh, 
good night weekend because actually to make it a really good weekend you want some decent stuff in Ireland and the only Saturday racing is Cork and it doesn't look like it's going to be the best meeting for, for value we'll see all right that is me <laughs> sorry that's 25 minutes tonight I'll see you tomorrow night thank you very much bye bye